Hello everybody and welcome back to another Brawl Machine video. Today we have Thagrosh the Messiah going up against the Dreamer of Grimkin. Uh, now I do want to quickly apologize uh, because I acknowledge that my list being Thagrosh 2 is extremely similar to the list that I brought in the last battle report which was Thagrosh 1. Uh, they're like very very similar lists. I think there's one or two models different uh, not including Thagrosh. So I do apologize for that. It was something that I just I didn't really think about when we were recording games. Normally I try to avoid doing too many uh, duplicate factions, never mind duplicate lists, but sometimes it happens. But I hope you guys enjoy it anyways, and uh, I'll just try to kind of lay low on the uh, Primal Terrors for a little bit. So um, without further ado, let's get into the battle report. This one's kind of crazy, and as you can see from the time on this video, it's not actually that long of a battle, but a lot of stuff happens really quickly. So uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a pretty good one, anyways. So yeah, let's get into the lists. All right, so for my list today, it's actually quite similar to the list I brought last week, as I mentioned in the intro. But I'm running Thagrosh Two in Primal Terrors. So um, Thagrosh Two is a model that I haven't used very much, but I really want to start using more because he's a ton of fun. He's an absolute powerhouse himself. He's got a POW 18, a POW 14, and a range 10 POW 12 continuous fire spray. He's got tough, he's got def 14, arm 18. This guy is an absolute beast. Uh, a thong means he does not really care if his beasts are still standing. He gets to go up to max fury anyways. Uh, blood spawn is really cool. If your opponent's gonna try and hit this guy, they better be killing him because otherwise he's spawning in lessers, which is just absolutely fantastic. Um, Sack Pawn for Lessers helps him against gun lines, being a large base definitely a good thing. And he has Critical Freeze on his breath, which, you know, when it comes up is kind of cool, especially since it's also got Continuous Fire. Uh, going into his spells, he's got Aggravator, which uh, gives his Warbeasts hyper aggressive if they take damage from something anytime while they're, except while they're advancing. After the attack is resolved, they can immediately make a full advance directly towards the attack model. Really good way to get up the board fast, uh, especially if your opponent has guns. Uh, Dragon's Blood is just an arm buff, pretty good, I like to keep it on the Ogre in this list. Uh, Manifest Destiny is kind of just a really, really good offensive spell. Um, gives you an additional die on melee attack and melee damage rolls for models in your battle group, but you discard the lowest of each roll. Such a fantastic spell for a heavy battle group, and uh, works really well here. Uh, lastly, he's got kind of the, the token bomb, uh, but for him it's actually half decent once in a while. Scourge, it's a little pricey, but does okay damage and most importantly knocks down in an AoE, which is pretty big. Lastly, for his feet, after all friendly models have completed their activations this turn, all of his Warbeasts get to make a full advance and a basic melee attack. This is a really, really good feat for pushing up the board and again, really just pushing that idea that Thagrosh likes to have a really big battle group and he's not afraid to play aggressively with them. So in Thagrosh's battle group today, I have Amok. Uh, this was one of my first games actually using Amok, and uh, he's pretty good. He gives rise to all your Ogren. He's got a few other kind of odds and ends here, anti-incorporeal, uh, anti-upkeep spells, and some range increases. Just kind of good stuff to have in general. Uh, for actual beasts, I brought Nangelius, uh, kind of just one of my go-to beasts. The armor piercing strike is super good, and then sidestep allows it to get some really tricky solos sometimes. Uh, alongside that, I brought a Carnivian, just a really good powerhouse beast, can tank decently well with spiny growth, and has some fantastic output. And then lastly, I brought the Mechana Shredder. The Mechana Shredder is just almost a staple at this point. Uh, plus two inch movement and Pathfinder against Constructs is absolutely amazing, and even when there are no Constructs, being able to charge without being forced being able to put the Fury on this guy instead is just a really, really good bonus. Uh, other than that, he can do work once in a while, it doesn't come up often, but it does exist. For the rest of the list, it's relatively standard. I got the War Chief for the plus one to my Ogren, as well as Blood Drinker. Um, aside from that, I have the Warmongers, full unit of them. They're really, really good. They just hit relatively hard. They have tough. They're relatively annoying to remove, and they're hyper accurate, especially combined with the War Chief and Gorag Rotten Eye, giving minus two defense to enemy models that have line of sight to him. Uh, Gorag also gives them the mini feet no quarter, which gives them Pathfinder and extra movement on charges. Just a super fantastic kind of uh, trio there. Very accurate, very hard hitting. And then lastly, just to round things out because I had the points, I threw in a spell murder. Didn't really plan on using it for much more than flag camping, but it's there. So I decided to run the Dreamer for uh, my army. Um, I really like what she does. 
Uh, for Brawl Machines, you can spawn a bunch of uh, Phantasm models, which count as solos, so you can cap flag with them. She can go incorporeal uh, once per round, um, and then she can use Future Sight to boost her Call to Sleep uh, range attack, which has Sleepwalkers. Uh, so if Living War models hit, it becomes stationary for one round, but if you get a crit, you can then make a full advance with it and then attack. Uh, so her spells are Abyssal Gate. It's a 3-inch place if you deal damage. Um, she's got Artifice of Deviation, which gives 5-inch AoE of cover. Uh, and Feeble, which gives minus 2 to attack and damage rolls against the model slash unit. And uh, Manifest Destiny, which is really big. Uh, it gives an additional die on melee attack and melee damage rolls for her battle group. Then she's got Mirage, which I like putting on like a unit of Dreadrot just uh, up their threat range. Uh, her trumps all fall down. So when an enemy model destroys or moves a friendly model from play um, with an attack during its activation, you can activate it. And the activated model and the model that activated becomes knocked down at the end of its activation. Um, I'm running Baron Tunglick with her. Uh, I really like her his parlay ability to keep her safe, um, and it also has Spell Slave, which can be useful for Abyssal Gate. I then brought a Cage Rager to act as an Arcane Vortex and an Arc Node. Uh, other than that, he's just a big beat stick. And I brought Skin and Moans just as a good heavy that hits it really hard with all the corpses I got in this force. Uh, I can give him another corpse from Isaiah for uh, he goes. Then I have a Crabbit just as a shield guard. I brought a Witchwood. It's uh, good at dragging um, enemy models because it ignores cover. Um, it's got advanced deployment so it can threaten zones early and it ignores it in melee defense bonus. I brought his eye of the Dread Harvester. He gives all the Dread Rots gang and Spectral Onslaught. And since it's Elite Cadre, even if he dies, they keep it. Other than that, he's very fast moving. He's got Thresher and he hits like a truck. I then brought Lady Kari and a Rose to buff up my beasts and for some Fury management. And I brought a min unit of Dread Rots just as good targets for my uh, mini feet. Uh, so when they get. Uh, knocked down or like disabled uh they can uh knock down enemy models legion turn one all right so turn one uh the very first thing i wanted to worry about was which wood you can see me marking it out there with that kind of uh sword measuring stick there um and that's just kind of my line of do not cross this if i don't want to lose the model the witch wood uh, from there, it's kind of just advancing up. I put Angelius in a position to threaten the entire zone and make sure Witchwood can't move up without being in Angelius's threat, so I'm kind of just trying to counter threat there. Um, and then everything else is just pretty much running. I don't think I really do anything too crazy this turn here. Um, so, Thagrosh probably ends up doing... Yeah, Thagrosh is going to put up Aggravator here. And uh, I'm going to throw Dragon's Blood onto the unit, and then uh, he's going to charge just so he can get a decent amount of distance forward. But that's pretty much it for this turn. Grimkin, turn one. So I start off here by moving the Witch Wood up to tow the zone. Um, maybe get a valuable peace trade, but the main thing is just threatening scenario, threatening the entire zone with its drag gun. Then right now I'm going to look towards moving the Cage Rager up. Um, I'm going to want to keep him beside the building, just kind of get some cover against any guns that go after him. And same thing, um, just be in a spot where he's relevant. Um, soon here I'm going to be moving up the Dread Rots, and I want them to spread out so like a few of them are in the threat of the spray, but not enough where it's too much value being lost. Uh, so I'm going to be spreading them out um, and keeping a few back. Uh, right here, I'm just moving up Dreamer. She just fails a charge against Angelius, and uh, before that, puts up an Artifice of Deviation for cover. And here you can see me moving up the Dread Rots and doing the whole positioning I was mentioning earlier. And here I'm moving up Skin just uh, as a counter punch. Um, so when uh, Jason goes into the Dread Rots, I can Peace Trade. Uh, Crab is just going into a relevant shield guard position. 
And then I'm just figuring out where the last two will go. Uh, so I'm just looking at putting a bear in there. Uh, there's not much reason to parlay, so I'm probably just going to put up a uh, swamp gas uh, so he's a bit harder to remove. And I'm just going to have Isaiah just run across the zone and just threaten that area. Legion, turn two. Alright, so um, I've got a lot to plan out here. I'm predicting Reed's going to try and use the speed drop arcana if he thinks I can get too many things in, so I need to make sure everything still can if he does. Um, I realize that Angelis can get into Witchwood with or without the speed drop arcana, so I'm okay with him triggering it on Thagrosh here. So I move Thagrosh up, and um, I try to pick out my target. I end up going for that top clump there, which is uh, Dreadrot and Witchwood I think I'm hitting. So I spray the two there, and um, I hit the dread rot, and it fails tough, so I remove that. Uh, as for the tree, I unfortunately don't do very much to it. I think I do one damage, but he does pop uh, all falls down, which is kind of a pain, because at this point I've already cast Manifest Destiny and my feet, and um, his uh, all falls down kind of perfectly counters my feet, which is a bit of a pain here. So Thagrosh is going to be knocked down, um, and we're putting the token there now. And uh, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing with my other models here. I don't want to give him too much because obviously knockdown is a problem. Um, but Angelius needs to kill Witchwood because otherwise Witchwood's going to basically bully me the rest of the game. So I have it charge in, and oh right, I decide that I'm going to have the Mechanic Shredder give it a free charge. So I have it charge in, and it goes onto the Witchwood, and. Uh, I think I kill it in one here. I could be wrong. Oh no, I do leave it alive. Okay, but I make my sidestep. Right, I was debating whether to use the Tail Strike or not on the Witchwood, and I decided against it. I ended up using the Tail Strike into Skin and Moans here, and I do a really good amount of damage there. It was something like 16 damage. Um, I'll have it up on the screen in the uh, in, in the video, but uh, it does a crazy amount of damage to the Skin and Moans there, which was really, really nice to see. And then I buy an attack into the Witchwood to actually just take it off the table because free things. And I realize Angelus can't be knocked down because of Serpentine, so that's kind of a little bit of a silver lining here. So Angelus is in a fantastic position and unknockdownable. Thagrosh is going to assault forward and spray a couple Dread Rots here. So I believe I end up actually missing the first one, or I hit in tough. I'm not 100% sure, but I do kill the second one. Uh, and no, there's no knockdown token, so it's got to be, uh, I just missed. Um, but I did kill the second one, and then, of course, Carnivian is knocked down. And Mark is just going to walk into the zone. I need him to threaten Dreamer and make sure Reed doesn't feel too safe with Incorp. And uh, the rest of my models are pretty much just running into the zone. I don't think anyone else does anything too fancy. Um, but now, of course, my feet's going to pop, so... I don't remember exactly what happens here. I know obviously Thagrosh and Carnivian can't use it. Um, and I'm pretty sure Angelius actually ends up going into Dreamer. Um, so I, I, in hindsight, this was probably not a good idea. But um, I, I hit Dreamer and I do something like 9 damage, which he transfers over to the Cage Rager. Um, and again, the damage will be up on the screen for that. But yeah, that was uh, Legion turn 2. So a lot of work from Angelius. Grimkin turn 2. So on Jason's turn, I popped my all foul uh, down arcana, so a lot of his forces knock down here, which will make them uh, easy targets for my models. So right here, I'm just working out where I want my models to go, um, and how I want to put out the buffs, because I can put up Manifest Destiny and Enrage with Kariana, Lady Kariana. Uh, so right here, I have her move up to the flag and just put up an Enrage on Skid and Moans. Um, then I'm going to have Skin go into Angelius, and he rolls like fire, so he rolls near perfect on the first one, and the second one just takes him out, um, which is a lot more efficient than I expected, so that leaves me with an additional Fury I can use on him, so I'm actually going to use his Animus to get Bushwhack, so he can now make a move after doing his combat action, and I'm going to put him back there. Uh, this was a bit of a mistake. Um, I should have put him in a more scenario relevant position, but I was worried he'd get taken out if I uh, moved him too close. Um, right here too, you can see me uh, moving up the Phantasm I created off Angelius just to bulldoze some Ogren out of the way. 
And I'm gonna go with the Dread Rots, and they're just gonna charge uh, some Ogrun and Amok. And I managed to pretty easily take out the first couple. I also have a few going into Carnivian. And you can see me rolling that right here. I end up doing some uh, 5 damage to the 2 there, or 3. I uh, hit the next one. And I'm going to do uh, 7 to the 5. And I nearly take him out just with those, so I'm just going to have the Cage Rager just go on up and finish him off. And he uh, does it pretty easily in the first couple hits. So he'll get Carnivian's Corpse Token and he RFPs him. And right here I'm going to have the Medium Phantasm I created, him off, created off of that uh, to run up and contest uh, the flag up there. Then I have uh, Zaya do a charge and just do a Thresher on the Ogren. Takes out the first one, gets a corpse, and uh, ends up doing a little bit of chip to the second. Just gonna have a Kravik go up to try to remove that other Ogren. Uh, he ends up hitting with the boost, um, but Kravits are unfortunately only PS8, so he's not gonna do any damage here. So right here I'm uh, going to have Baron go, and this is me forgetting that uh, Consume doesn't work on medium base, it's only on small. So I roll everything, um, and this is where I find uh, find out that it doesn't do that, um, and Jason thankfully lets me take it back and just parley. Alright, so um, for my turn 3 here, uh, Reed is up 1, I've lost both of my heavies, and I need to do a lot of work. So I start out with this, uh, my, my Ogren solo here, and I just want him to clear out some of these Dread Rots. So I'm charging forward into one of them, and uh, I hit the first one. Uh, he does fail tough, so I kill it, and then I go into the second one, and we actually, we thought I hit, but then we thought about it later. Uh, he made tough, and we put a knockdown, but then realized that I didn't actually hit, so we took that away. Um, and uh, that was a little disappointing because him making a tough obviously ends the Berserk Chain. So wasn't really sure, or, or actually just me missing another, thinking back on it. Um, I wasn't sure how to kind of proceed from there, but I knew I could still probably do a fair amount of work this turn. Um, I wanted Thagrosh to kill the Cage Rager, and I think that's what I'm doing right here actually. Is I just kind of plop him down over there. He's got flying, so he doesn't really care about models in the way, and he ends up staying in the engagement range of everything that he start that he moves into. And he's just charging the cage rager here. And um, I'll put the numbers up on the screen. Uh, but I end up doing kind of a mixed bag here. My first few hits really strong. I get a couple bad ones towards the middle, and then I get another really good one at the end. And I do end up uh, killing it with two fury to spare. So I elected not to go for Mana Civest Destiny this turn, um, but I will point out also when the Warmonger was uh, was hitting those Dread Rots, uh, he did proc Sacrifice there, so this Cage Rager was at full health and all the damage Angelius did to Skin and Moans is gone. Uh, the Eruption of Ash or whatever it's called does end up killing a Dread Rot, which was kind of nice, something that I didn't really think would matter, but it did. So that was cool. Um, and of course the Cloud is there kind of protecting Thagrosh for next turn. So now I'm figuring out what I got to do next, and I elect to have the Ogren go next, so they're just kind of run charging. I get uh, one into the Phantasm, which didn't actually get a charge movement, um, two into Isaiah, and one into that Dread Rot kind of at the bottom of the screen there. So uh, this was pretty important here how this goes, because uh, obviously Isaiah is a really important power piece and needs to be removed. That Dread Rot at the bottom is threatening Thagrosh, and that needs to be removed. And uh, the Phantasm is just a pain, so I go into the Phantasm first, and uh, I either miss or I do no damage to it. I think I did no damage to it, yeah. Um, which was a bit of a pain. Uh, then the uh, Dread Rod at the bottom made a tough roll, as you can see there, he's knocked down now. Uh, which was, again, a little inconvenient, but not the end of the world. Um, and then I get a couple into Isaiah, and I believe the second one knocks him off of the horse. So um, he goes dismounted, which is 
a start to removing that piece. Um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned at the beginning, but I completely forgot Vengeance this turn, and it was really disappointing because I think I could have done a lot more with these guys. So now I'm moving the Mechana Shredder to go and try and hit Baron because I, he's not really doing anything else at the moment. Um, his Animus is a lot less useful right now. So um, I walk him to Baron. I actually I, I boost a hit, and I do succeed in hitting and killing him, which was kind of nice. Mechana Shredder did really good there. Lastly, I have the Spell Murder try to take his Phantasm off my flag because uh, I realize him scoring up is a problem. It's low odds, but I really don't have that much else to deal with it right now. So uh, I do unfortunately miss. I need an 11 and I rolled a 10 because Annoyance is really annoying, believe it or not. And uh, that's my turn. Grimkin, turn three. So right here, because of the, my mispositioning and my skin, um, Jason pretty easily manages to take out my heavies, and I don't have a good response for it. Uh, my skin's way too far back to get in much work here. So I'm looking at the board, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose on attrition at this point. Um, so I realize I need to go for an objective play. So right here I have the Dreamer go, and I'm using her gun to hope for crits on the Ogrun. Um, and I'm going to be boost, um, well, I have future sight, but I'm going to be boosting some of these, uh, just to fish for crits so I can make them walk up and, uh, smack that objective. Uh, so I crit on the first one, uh, so I get to make a full move and then they'll become stationary at the end of it. And it's just going to swing into the objective and it does about half the objective's health, which was pretty lucky. Uh... Then I'm just going to have her shoot another Ogren and hope for the same thing. Um, this one ends up hitting, uh, but no crit. Uh, still useful though, because it'll make it stationary so it can't free strike. Uh, other than that though, it's a bit in the way, but I should be able to get a couple more dead rots through. So I'm then having the large phantasm go and he's going to be bulldozing. Uh, he's going to eat a, some free strikes here, but the idea is to make some room for my models to get through to the objective. So he ends up dying here, um, which doesn't really matter for me. He did his job, just cleared up some room. Um, right here, I'm going to have Azaya go in and just try to clear up the charge lanes. Going into the Ogrun and pressuring. Uh, he ends up missing um, and doesn't really do anything. So right here, I'm going to move up the skin and get into some of the only models he can, which are the Ogrun. Um, and he's going to be attempting to free up the Krabbit, so the Krabbit can hopefully take out an Ogrun. Which is uh, unfortunate, because I was hoping his eye could uh, handle those. So I'm just working out how, how the skin wants to go in without um, blocking the Krabbit's move. So he's going to go in here, and he pretty easily uh, handles both Ogrun. Um, they tough, one, one toughs, but I just, uh, finish him off with a bot attack. Right here I'm seeing if, uh, Lady Karina could possibly enrage the Krabbit, um, but she can't do that while standing on the flag. So I'm just gonna have the Krabbit go, it's gonna walk up and then jump, and it's going to boost damage, or boost a hit, and boost damage. Um... And it fails to kill, um, unsurprisingly. Uh, so now I just gotta go with one dread rot into the objective. It's dice off eight, and I need uh, thirteen. I end up getting a thirteen and uh, killing it. So I win the game there. So there you have it. That was Thagrosh the Messiah versus Dreamer. Uh, really interesting battle report. There was a lot of stuff happening turn two. The Angelius uh, for mine went in and just did crazy amounts of work. It was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, dice were super hot this game. Stuff like the uh, the play on the objective there, um, needing uh, 13 to, to get the kill at the very end um, from that last dread rot. All the uh, attempts going into the Ogren solo. I mean, when it came down to a Krabbit trying to kill the Ogren solo... 
Um, there was just tons of tons of crazy things happening in this game. So even though it was on the shorter side, I thought it would still be a relatively decent upload. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. It really means a lot to us. And if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. We're going to be posting these every other week. So uh, yeah, until next time, peace.